We are following a developing news out of Garrett County where one person is dead after a two-car crash. A Lexington church is hosting a peace walk tonight after a weekend of violence in Lexington. Donald Trump makes more controversial comments about the integrity of the presidential election and a new accuser comes forward. I'm Marley Hall in New York with details coming up. This is WKYT News at 5. Usually busy, U.S. 27 in Garrett County has just reopened following a deadly crash this afternoon. That highway had been closed for hours. Police tell us two vans collided near Boone's Creek Road, killing one person and injuring two others, including a young child. Our Caitlin Sentner is live at the scene now with the details. It's our top story at 5. Caitlin. Now, the crash along 27 landed right in the driveway of a family farm. The woman that lives here, she said she doesn't want to go on camera, but she says this is horrific and says there's not a day that will go by from here on out. She won't remember that someone lost their life in her front yard. Now, it's hard. The crash, it was hard to look at. We're told one person is dead and two others, including a child, have been taken to UK hospital. The child is fighting for its life this afternoon in surgery at the hospital. Kentucky State Police says it's still hard to tell exactly what happened. It was just before 1 o'clock. Police say a minivan was T-boned along 27. Here's what they do know. A purple minivan was headed toward Lancaster when it, for some reason, crossed the center line and turned sideways. They say it was hit by a white van traveling away from town. That van, they say, at some point made a pass, but they're not sure if it has anything to do with the events leading up to the deadly crash. Now, there are some marks on the road police say are unusual for this kind of crash. Accident reconstruction will be back out here tomorrow investigating. Live in Garrett County, Caitlin Setner, WKYT. Caitlin, thank you. The coroner says he has identified the victim but is still working to notify next of kin before releasing the name. Well, it's something we haven't seen really much of for weeks, but we finally have some measurable rainfall here in the bluegrass, even a few strong storms. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey, who told us it was coming and it came. Yeah, and those thunderstorms are really ramping it up right now, Sam, and departs to central Kentucky. Defender radar network getting awfully busy as we track colder air in against that warmer air we've had over the past few days. You know, something has to give. Look at this thunderstorm increasing as it crosses out of Jessamine County and into Fayette County over the next few minutes. And that line is trying to come together from the bluegrass region back toward the southwest. Strong thunderstorms had a warning out for parts of Marion County a little bit ago. That has expired, but that uh, strong line of thunderstorms right on top of the Lebanon area, down toward New Market where we had some hail, gravel switch, and on top of Perryville here into Boyle County. So Danville, get ready. Skies are barking just to your west. That extends to the north into Harrodsburg. Now look at that thunderstorm here into the Nicholasville area up toward Keene. That is Right on top of 27, heading toward the Fayette Mall and pressing into the southern parts of Fayette County over the next little bit. That is going to have a lot of cloud to ground lightning with it. Also, some gusty winds, maybe a little pea sized hell. We're looking at that storm on our live sky cam here from the station. And again, it is rolling its way on into town fairly quickly. So, Lexington, get ready. The skies are getting ready to open up as that thunderstorm works on in. And 3D defenders showing that storm is trying to flare up a little bit. But look at that wall of thunderstorms back to the southwest. Gusty winds and a lot of heavy rain associated with that. Central uh, Kentucky getting the action now. Eastern Kentucky, some lighter stuff. But that future radar shows how that line blows up into Central Kentucky. And then look at that for the rest of the evening. It is game on. For additional rounds of showers and thunderstorms, guys, we'll come back and walk you through the big chill down and track those strong storms that are out there in just a few. All right, Chris, we'll see you in just a bit. We appreciate it. Thank you. A Lexington church is hosting a peace walk tonight along the same stretch of South Broadway where 15 year old Trinity Gay was killed Sunday morning. The pastor hopes it will help people realize just how serious the violence is in the community. WKYT's Monique Blair joins us now live from South Broadway. Monique? Amber, this has been a very tough week for many people who live here in Lexington after 15-year-old Trinity Gay was shot and killed while she was hanging out with some of her friends at the cookout restaurant here on South Broadway early Sunday morning. Now yesterday, a fourth person in this case, 20-year-old Lamont Williams, 
was arrested in connection to the murder of Trinity Gay. He faced a judge today and pleaded not guilty to wanton endangerment first degree. Now many people here in Lexington are really pushing for the violence to stop. Pastor Young here at the Higher Praise International Deliverance Temple on South Broadway says the idea to have this march started out for Trinity, but it really is for anyone who has been touched by violence. Pastor Young says he hopes that drivers will see people marching down South Broadway and it will help them see just how serious the violence is and how bad it is hurting people. We want everybody in the street that's driving down, they will see us holding signs and pictures and shirts, all of it. I want them to see it all so they can know what's going on within the world and how bad it's hurting everybody. Now that march will begin here on South Broadway in front of the church. They will march past Cookout Restaurant, which is just a couple blocks away, and the march will then end at Triangle Park. It is all set to begin at 6 o'clock, rain or shine. Reporting live in Lexington, Monique Blair, WKYT. Thank you. All four of those suspects who are charged in the Trinity case, Trinity Gay case, will be back in court on October 25th for a preliminary hearing. Police are investigating a huge jewelry theft at a Lexington hotel. A jewelry dealer claims he was robbed at gunpoint in the parking lot of the Holly Inn Express on Buena Vista Drive near Winchester Road and I-75. Investigators say that the victim told them that five men wearing masks jumped out of a van and took his bags threatening him with guns and knives. And the jewelry de dealer says those bags contained 250 pieces of jewelry valued at about $275,000. A ruling today by the state Supreme Court has invalidated Lexington's minimum wage ordinance. The state's high court struck down Louisville's minimum wage law, saying the council overstepped its authority when it raised wages. Lexington's ordinance was similar to Louisville's law. In a statement, city spokesperson Susan Straub said, this opinion effectively prevents cities, including Lexington, from increasing the minimum wage. Lexington's local minimum wage ordinance has been invalidated. Straub says it will now be up to individual businesses to decide if they will roll back the raise that was already going into effect. We'll have much more on the ruling and what it means for local businesses ahead on WKYT News at 6. Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump are both claiming victory following the final presidential debate. The candidates are scheduled to meet for another showdown later tonight. Meanwhile, a tenth woman is now accusing Trump of sexual assault. Marley Hall has the very latest now from New York. Donald Trump rallied supporters in the battleground state of Ohio Thursday, where polls show a tight race. Hillary Clinton is the most corrupt and dishonest person ever to seek the office of the presidency. Trump also added he would accept the outcome of the election if he wins, but he added, But I would also reserve my right to contest or file a legal challenge in the case of a questionable result. During Wednesday's presidential debate, Trump would not say if he would accept the outcome. I will tell you at the time. I'll keep you in suspense. The candidates also sparred over the economy, fighting ISIS and manufacturing. I sat in my apartment today on a very beautiful hotel down the street known as Trump. Made with Chinese steel. Clinton and Trump will come face to face again tonight to roast each other at the annual Al Smith charity dinner here in New York. The Trump campaign is also dealing with a new revelation only 19 days until Election Day. Karina Virginia says Trump groped her at the U.S. Open in 1998. Perhaps he will label me as just another nasty woman. The Trump campaign calls her claim and those of other accusers fictional stories. Marley Hall, CBS News, New York. The latest national poll shows Clinton holds a seven point lead over Trump. We have learned that a Central Kentucky Bank plans to donate money to the Lexington Police Department. According to police, Central Bank has committed to donating $25,000. That money will be used to buy Narcan. Last month, we told you that officers will start carrying Narcan, a drug that can help save lives of people who have overdosed on heroin. 
The NCAA has charged Louisville's men's basketball program with four violations stemming from a nearly year-long investigation into allegations made by a former escort. WKYT's Rob Bromley is here now to explain what this could mean for the program. Rob? It has been a difficult year for the UofL basketball program, and today the university released the NCAA's notice of allegations. Now, the NCAA does not allege lack of institutional control in the scandal, but it does allege that Rick Pitino failed to monitor staff member Andre McGee, who the NCAA found paid escorts to engage in sexual activity with athletes or recruits. The alleged amount paid, at least $5,400. Patino has maintained all along he knew nothing about it, and he said it again today. Large disappointment is that somebody who's seen this going on didn't come to me or come go to one of the assistant coaches and say, what's going on is wrong. We need to put a stop to it. And as the athletic director here, I've asked it to myself a million times, should he have known? I've come to the conclusion that he could not have known. No matter what he did or how, how close he is to his players and staff, he could not have known. UofL plans to fight the allegation against Patino. What now? The school has 90 days to respond. The NCAA enforcement staff will have 60 days to reply. And then a hearing will be scheduled with the Committee of Infractions sometime next spring. Rob, thank you. The escort scandal broke a little over a year ago on October 1st of last year. A Lexington family with a close call after a car ended up in their yard. We talked to the homeowner coming up in 10 minutes. And then officials in Chicago shut off hundreds of drinking fountains after they were found to have high levels of lead contamination. The details later in Better Living. Your hour by hour forecast with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. It is a booming afternoon here in the middle of October across the Bluegrass State. You know what? Something has to give when you go from 80s to temperatures that will be in the 30s by Saturday morning. And what's giving? Thunderstorms. You're hearing those boomers now crashing into parts of central Kentucky. Look at that line of thunderstorms from Lexington, not too far away now from Nashville, Tennessee. So that's coming together in a pretty potent little line. It has more of a northeastward movement than a true west to east movement as of now. So we're going to watch for some very heavy rains falling over the same uh, Chunks of real estate here from Marion County into Taylor County and across the Boyle County area. Thunderstorms are zipping in. The line itself slowly pressing to the east. Individual thunderstorms are, though, going from southwest to northeast. Perryville back to a gravel switch and now pressing into downtown Danville. Thunder, lightning. As the skies light up across 150, heading out of uh, Danville going south toward Houstonville, 127. Thunder and lightning getting ready to press on into town. Wet in Lexington. Thunderstorms are flaring up right on top of the city. That includes Nicholasville here into Jessamine County. And on top of the Fayette Mall, getting into uh, inside New Circle Road with the heaviest rains and getting close now to Jacobson Park. Folks out at Keeneland getting in on some late day showers and thunderstorms. We've had some on and off rains around Beaumont a little earlier in the day. Fayette Mall, get over uh, into the Manowar area. It's really coming down. Downtown Lexington, heavy rains here, and that includes the Hamburg Pavilion area toward Jacobson Park. Showers, thunderstorms in those particular areas. And our live sky cam, the leading edge of that thunderstorm is just about to the station. And you can see the rains that are falling behind that. So uh, some distant rumbles of thunder I'm hearing here at the station. Just off to our west. That'll move into parts of Bourbon County, Winchester, Clark County, some additional showers into eastern Kentucky. All of this with front number one. Front number two is back to the west of us. That'll have a push of colder air coming into play. Temperatures out ahead of this. We hit 80 southeastern Kentucky, upper 60s bluegrass region, 50s though, right behind that front that continues to press its way on through. Now we hit the fast forward button, 8 o'clock on Friday night. That cold air is firmly entrenched across central and eastern Kentucky. Hour by hour forecast with showers and thunderstorms through the evening. Rain tonight into the first half of tomorrow. It may take a little while before the skies can clear up tomorrow afternoon with temperatures into the 50s. High school football fans, it's a cold one. Temperatures dropping into the 40s. We'll be into the 40s again, Wildcat fans out of Commonwealth Stadium on Saturday evening. Look at that low Saturday morning, 35 degrees. Whew. Overall seasonal early part of next week, next chance of rain. Wednesday and Thursday of next week. Those are pretty good old thunderstorms that are out there now, guys. We'll keep an eye on them through the evening. And get ready to layer up this weekend. It's going to be cold, yeah. Chris, thank you.
A couple of things as far as collisions. We have one right now at Clays Mill Road just down from the circle. It has inbound Clays Mill block. Traffic's really backed up both directions there. Also inbound Nicholasville near Jesslin. We're backed up from about south of Zandel all the way toward Commonwealth Stadium at the moment. Drive times to Versailles, 18 minutes, a little longer to Winchester this afternoon, about 25. Now back to you in the studio. Thank you, Don. Police in one central Kentucky community trying to return hundreds of dollars worth of items stolen from cars. The details coming up. A Lexington woman is glad her children are all right after a car nearly ran into her home. It happened this afternoon at, at a home on the corner of Halstead Court and Asbury Lane. That's just off Russell Cave Road. As WKYT Sabira Rayford reports, it could have ended much differently. That story is new at 5. Anna Sanchez lives in the home, and she says if the house did not sit up on a hill, things could have had a very different outcome. I mean, just a few feet away. <laughs> if, if the sidewalk hadn't have been there, the stairs, it would have probably been inside of the house. Sanchez says she heard a large boom and immediately went to go check on her kids. When she saw they were okay, she looked outside and saw her yard was not. When I was trying to call the police here, I mean, of course, I was nervous. I could hardly talk. I was worried about the kids rather than, you know, but yeah, it was really scary. She says the person driving the car was not acting normal. They took off running. They tried starting the car back up, and I mean, they had no luck, of course. They couldn't get it out. It was really stuck. No one was injured in the crash, but Sanchez says police did find some suspicious items in the driver's car. Yeah, we're going to call the insurance, see if they can pay for the damages done. Good thing it wasn't bad, but there's still some damage. Sanchez says police are still trying to locate the person driving the car. In Lexington, Sabir Rayford, WKYT. And despite what that video looks like, Sanchez says the car did not actually damage the home. A Central Kentucky Police Department wants to return items stolen from cars, but they need your help. Our county by county coverage at five begins in Clark County. Winchester police say the two teenagers admitted to stealing things from unlocked cars early Tuesday morning. Police say the teen stole about $1,500 worth of items, including a computer, some GPS units, and a stereo faceplate. If you live in the area around East Hickman Street in Winchester and you may be missing something from your car, you're asked to call Winchester Police. A Laurel County woman in jail after police say she stole more than $10,000 worth of cash and merchandise. The sheriff's office says that 22 year old Whitney Johnson was arrested yesterday after trying to hide in a house. Police say the crime happened while Johnson was working as a cashier at a business in Norrell, Laurel County. A Franklin County auto parts plant has reopened days after two deadly workplace accidents within a week. I'm trying to do this. Shut down on Tuesday after a man died from an electric shock. And days earlier, a woman died from injuries from working with a crane. A statement from the company said they inspected every piece of equipment before resuming production yesterday. They also say grief counselors will be available for their employees. Three children in the hospital in Louisville tonight after being hit by a car earlier today while waiting for their school bus. We have an update coming up at 530. If you live in the city, you may experience higher levels of stress. Coming up in Better Living, we'll have some ways to reduce it. It is time now for Better Living, health, education, and consumer news that impacts your life. With 66% of the world's population expected to be living in cities by the year 2050, mental health professionals are putting a new emphasis on reducing the negative impacts of urban life. In this report, Kim Hutcherson has three things you can start doing right now to reduce the stress of city living. Bumper to bumper traffic. Air pollution, crowded streets, the stresses of urban living can appear endless. In fact, studies show that city dwellers are more likely to suffer from anxiety and mood disorders. The first recommendation, go to the park. Living close to or spending time in green spaces can decrease the risk of depression. Next up, get out of your car. Walking or cycling to work is better for your physical and mental health. Finally, be aware of your environment. Mindfully observing the area around you can help restore a sense of control. Loud noises keeping you up at night? Find the source. Even though you may not be able to stop it, knowing the cause can reduce your stress because it increases that feeling of control. For today's Health Minute, I'm Kim Hutcherson. 
City officials in Chicago have shut off hundreds of drinking fountains in city parks because of high levels of lead. Lead levels higher than the EPA standard for drinking water were found in 459 water fixtures. In a statement, the Chicago Park District said ensuring the health and safety of all park patrons and staff is a top priority. Park officials say the fountains will be removed, replaced, or repaired as needed. All drinking water sources in the park system were tested. The source of the lead contamination has not yet been determined. The holidays are right around the corner, and that can only mean one thing. Pringles is releasing its holiday-flavored chips. Who needs pumpkin pie or fruit cake when you can eat sugar cookie-flavored potato chips? Pecan pie and salted caramel Pringles are making a return as well. Each can will cost $1.69, and they'll start appearing in stores in early November. Now, here's what's coming up for you at 530.